Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome to Berry Witched, which is a strawberry jam themed horror game where you get lost in the woods and encounter a strawberry witch. Where I grew up, the folklore surrounding our neighboring forest was always filled with such intrigue. Oh, what some of us would give into that endless maze of trees, bushes, and a fog so thick it tricks your eyes. Not many children were allowed to go in by themselves, and many legends we heard helped deter us from the woods. One of the most prominent ones claimed that any living creature that found themselves lost within the forest was destined to die. This urban legend was only really used by parents to scare kids out of going into the woods on their own, but there have been real reports of people going missing inside of these woods, never to be seen again. What drew the kids into these woods in the first place? The answer is surprisingly another urban legend. Rumor has it that a powerful witch lives deep, deep within the forest, hidden amongst the trees and wildlife. She said to have the power to bring one's deepest desires to fruition. <laughs> fruition. Fruit. What kid wouldn't dream of endless riches, popularity, success? Your deepest desires were awfully promising. However, getting lost while trying to find the witch, and succumbing to the forest of a legend, the thought was terrifying. As I grew up, my fear of these woods grew less and less. I'm not afraid of what lies beyond these trees anymore. What lies beyond? There are many paths to avoid this fate. Yet some seem to lead in circles, or just bring you nowhere. It's infuriating when you're trying to get to one place, only to be back where you started. That rumor, it echoed in my mind as I wandered aimlessly for what seemed to be hours. My legs were growing weak from the bumpy path I walked on. I am calm. I am fine. Everything will be fine. Despite saying these things to myself, I noticed my hands were shaking. I was lost, lost deep into the woods. Damn these winding paths. Choosing to heed my legs for quest for rest, I sat down against a tree nearby. The cold, thick air felt almost refreshing as I sat there. Over time, my eyes beckoned for rest as well, and I complied with their demands. My vision slowly fades to black. Hello? Hello, are you alright there? I hear a feminine voice call out to me. My eyes still closed. I felt a sharp pain in my head. A headache. My body felt in a different position from where I last left it. I could feel the cool grass beneath my head, but I don't remember laying down. I opened my eyes to finally greet the mysterious voice. Oh, you're okay. Thank goodness. I was starting to get worried. I'm not okay. In the Kokoro. A girl with bright pink hair and even brighter disposition met my gaze. She was hovering over my body, kneeling next to me. Her smile felt warm and comforting. She emanated the smell of freshly baked bread and strawberries. It does smell good. The more I thought, the worse pain in my head became. Ow! I groaned in pain, slowly gathering the strength to stand up once more. Oh, careful there. Here, let me help you. The girl held onto my arm and supported me as I stood up. My legs still ached and my head hurt, but nothing bad seemed to happen to me. Right, there'd be no chance of those silly legends being true. I looked over at her, noticing her fancy attire. What an odd girl. What was she doing out in the forest dressed like that? I suppose I shouldn't judge her so harshly. Her dress is cute, and she did just help me after all. Thank you. Who are you? Oh, my name is Strawberry. I run a bakery not too far from here. What's your name, friend? Um... Manly. My name is Manly. It's nice to meet you. But did you say your name was Strawberry? Strawberry! <laughs> yeah. My name is Strawberry. Because I'm the Strawberry Witch, silly. Which witch are you? Regardless, it's nice to meet you, Manly. Wait, did she just say witch? She didn't appear to be a more spiritual kind. She looked more like... Riding broomsticks, making potions, that kind of wish potions. Or perhaps was she the witch that I heard in Legends all those years ago? Golly! You look really worn out. Say, so how about you come and rest in my bakery for a while? You must be thirsty. I can get you something lovely to drink on the house. I should make save points. Lots of them. So here's the greatest question of life, right? When you're presented with a game of multiple endings and choices and things that can happen, do you try to save your life? 
or do you try to go the worst absolute route you can first? And you know what? Let, let's let's be nice first. Let, let's be nice for now. Let's see what happens. Sure, why not? This girl might seem strange, but God, I was thirsty. I had no idea how long I've been out here. Something to drink sounded so good right now. The lore that came from my inner child wanted to believe she was the witch from legend persuaded me even more. The reason I came to this forest could always wait a little longer. Besides, she didn't seem like a threatening type of person. Yet. Thank you. I would love that, but first... Can you tell me more about what you mean by... a witch like you? Oh, silly me. You probably don't have people like me where you're from. I'm a strawberry witch. My magic is centered around strawberries, plants, and all things sweet. I use my magic to make lovely treats in hopes of making people smile. That's a useless skill. How would we want to smile? So, no broomsticks. You should become the witch of money. Because it's a win-win. First off, you can make money. And secondly, you can make people smile. With money. I should become, like... I should get money powers. That'd be kind of cool. No granting someone's greatest desire either, hmm? Your answer was a little disappointing. Still, I couldn't help but feel that there was something greater beneath the surface. Hmm? Uh, no. Although I suppose I could make a strawberry fly if I worked hard on it. Yeah, this girl was harmless, at least. The witch enthusiastically led me for the winding paths of the forest. She appeared as though she knew every tree, bush, and rock like the back of her hand. As we walked, one question lingered in my mind. Where's the money witch? I mean, why would she build a bakery in a supposedly cursed forest? Surely it must be bad business to set up shop out where people are too scared to go. Maybe that's where her witchy magic kicked in. Perhaps she has her own reasons that I simply can't see yet. Maybe it's just like low property values. Gotta get what you gotta get, you know what I mean? I tried to rationalize the answers to each question that kept invading my head. My thoughts kept me so preoccupied that it was frankly a shock to me when we arrived at the location. What the? The house strawberry led me to appear to be made entirely of cake. With a sugary frosting on top of the candy stand and rooftop. It looked delectable. Oh, you don't eat kids, do you? The appearance would be any child's greatest dream. A very creative and magic child with a particularly sweet tooth, that is. Was it real? This all felt like an entirely different world. It was almost as if I had stepped foot into a fairy tale. Walking through the fields of strawberry bushes and closer to the house, I could see a sign that read Strawberry Witch's Bakery. Ta-da! Here we are! What do you think of the exterior, Manly? It took me so long to perfect my magic in order to make everything this cute. Gotta save the game again. It looks amazing. Is that real cake? Is it edible? It's very strange. I don't want to go too cynical my first route. Hmm. Let's... Okay, let's let's say, is it edible? Fine. Is that real cake? Is it edible? I asked this out of curiosity alone. Totally not because of being on the forest all by myself made me hungry. Ew! No, uh, it's not real. It's not real at all. It's just a totally normal bakery made of normal bakery materials. Does that mean it's edible? Oh man, I can eat you out of house and home! Yo! Are you like the, the strawberry baked good race? Is that why you're like a little sensitive to this? So it's re- Please don't eat my house! Strawberry spoke in a panicked voice and began to fidget with her apron. The house was totally edible. She's a really bad liar. Still, I felt bad, so I decided to give her this at least. Right. Totally inedible. Gotcha. <laughs> Anyways, why don't I show you the inside? The witch quickly gu guided me inside. Whether well, that was an attempt to keep me from eating the house, or simply because she felt awkward and wanted to move on from the topic, I'll never know. It was probably a mix of both options. A warm rush of air brushed- oh look, you got a strawberry carpet. And strawberry chairs. And strawberry lights! A warm rush of air brushed past my face upon entering the door of the bakery. The smell of fresh baked goods welcomed me further into the house. It was obviously apparent the strawberry theme resonated inside the building as well. Everything from the bright lights to the chairs, 
Even the rug was shaped in a strawberry pattern. The walls separating the front counter from the ceiling were also made of strawberries. I didn't think they could grow vertically. No, I'm certain with the way they appear in the wall, it shouldn't be possible. I frankly wasn't sure whether to be impressed or concerned about what I was getting myself into. Croissants, cakes, cookies, and more stock of shelves. Many shapes and sizes. They all made my mouth water. Surprisingly, not all of our baked goods had my host had displayed were made of strawberries. It's good to have some variety, I suppose. Maybe the things that aren't strawberries, the things you're supposed to eat. Can I get you something to drink? I cut... Oh, so you do have... I mean, you have strawberry milk. Okay, so you do eat strawberries here, I think. I quite recommend our strawberry milk. Oh, or our strawberry lemonade. Those are the best. Seem nice enough. Oh, so much for variety. Only strawberry drinks. This girl was kind of funny with her extreme theming. Save again... Um... Strawberry milk, sure. Ah, can I have some strawberry milk? Honestly, strawberry milk always held some sort of nostalgia for me. Me too! I can't quite remember the last time I've had it, though. A long time. Suppose today's just as good as a day as any to indulge in an old treat. Yes, of course. Go make yourself comfy, Manly. I'll be right back. Speaking of which, where are you... Are you making this food of magic, or like, do you have a strawberry cow... ...back there? With that, Strawberry pranced into the kitchen, humming a soft tune as she left. I took a moment to observe the room a bit closer before sitting down, and my gaze landed on the spiral staircase in the corner of the room. Vines of strawberries wrapped themselves gently around the hand railing, ripe and fresh as of all the strawberries around. I looked up curiously to see where the stairs may lead. In the corner of my eye, I could spot what seemed to be a bed. So she, she lived here as well. It's a bit odd to have the staircase to your room right in the middle of your bakery. I could hear her humming to getting closer. She must almost be back by now. Wanted to avoid looking like a snoop. I took a seat. She joined me shortly after, sitting across from me. Here you go. You must be thirsty. She said, setting down my drink of choice in front of me. I took a sip almost immediately. The cool, refreshing taste of the strawberry milk immediately regenerated some lost energy I had. Thank you. This was awfully kind of you. Aw, oh, don't mention it. I live to serve. It just looks like normal milk. I mean, I guess it's slightly pink. She laughed melodically, saying the live to serve bit in almost goofy, over fancy voice. Just please let me know if you need anything. Okay, Manly? Anything at all? Money! She smiled at me. Her voice sounded genuinely concerned. It was admittedly nice to feel someone so worried about me. I... Wasn't used to the feeling. Dang. Our conversation slowly melted into silence. I should probably think of something to say. So, why do you live out here all alone? So, why exactly do you live out here all on your own? Oh, one thing led to another and an opportunity came up I couldn't refuse. You could feel the loneliness for words alone. It was pitiful. She didn't exactly answer my question fully, though. I was itching to know more. Truthfully... I don't like being by myself at all. It gets really quiet out here. <laughs> what opportunity? Why, my bakery, of course. What else would it be? Hmm, that's another thing that I've been curious about. Just why exactly did you choose to build a bakery here? It doesn't seem like it attracts many people. Especially with all the rumors about the forest. Poor decision, you may ask my opinion. My questions came spilling out of my mouth, along with my internal thoughts. Every time I had hoped to clear up some suspicion, I was always brought with more questions. This time I wanted answers. You do know about the legend of these forests, correct? But it'd be shocking if you didn't know. What legends? I don't know what you're talking about. Gold? There's no gold in my back closet. Either you're a liar or just incredibly stupid. Dang, what kind of mean? I didn't believe Strawberry for a second. How could she not know the rumors? Anyone who lives anywhere near these woods hears about them in even passing jokes. It's especially shocking for a self-proclaimed witch to not know the urban legend about the witch who lived deep in the woods. Surely someone must have told her, right? I guess I would be the one that has to. There are many stories surrounding the forest, 
too many to count. How are those two rumors I think you should know? If you really insist on being ignorant. Strawberry sat there silently as I continued to tell her the urban legends. The first one is about a supposed witch that lives in the depths of these forests. Legend states that she has the power to bring anyone's deepest desires into reality. The witch's eyes lit up for a second at the mention of that story, so it was familiar to her. The second one says that anyone who becomes lost from these woods is destined to die. Well, that's just silly. I've gotten lost in these woods plenty of times and I'm okay. You also got lost and here you are, still standing. Well, of course, I don't believe in that one. However, a lot of people do. It just seems suspicious that you haven't heard, but chose to build a bakery here. I really haven't heard of that, but the first one... I think that might be about me. <laughs> Although, I'm not exactly good at granting wishes yet. I'm still learning. Give me money! So it was her after all. I thought you might be. The conversation got awkwardly quiet once more. That's not all of it, though. I'll admit, it is a little strange. But I've been working on a magic that can bring things to life in a whole new way. Like, reanimating the dead? Or reanimating money? Oh, um, it's actually a bit more embarrassing than that. Here, this actually reminds me. I have a present for you. Excitement burst through her voice as she spoke, abruptly standing up from her seat. Wait right here. She ran off, leaving me alone to question what was happening. A present. For me. But why? Once again, she had just met me. I didn't understand the reason for her kindness. Maybe she's just a nice person. Strawberry came back with a small pink box wrapped in a light green ribbon. Popping it down in front of me, she gave me an excited smile. Go on, open it. It's for you. Money? Hesitantly opened the gift box reveal. Ben. That's not money. Is this... a plushie? Haha, <laughs> no silly. That's a straw bunny. Ah, ah, oh, yeah, that actually makes sense. They're a mix of bunny and a strawberry. Kill me! One of my recent creations of life magic. All my life is just sweetness! Interesting. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, yeah, save. Uh... Oh man, I can't really... It's, it's a bun, man. We'll be back. We'll be back. We'll be back. Except the gift right now. Oh, hi, little buddy. You're lucky I didn't eat you yet. It's because you weren't money. I only eat money. I smiled warmly and put the straw bunny's head with one finger. Wah, 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 wah. Ben. They're awfully adorable, huh? Thank you, Strawberry. I'll take good care of them. Strawberry looked happier than ever after seeing me and her straw bunny getting along. I'm now curious, like, can we get a good ending? Because it's a horror game. I mean, the the warning implied things. Or is it going to be like a bad ending no matter what? Like, we're just delaying the inevitable? Oh man, I'm tempted to go back. Just a curiosity. Not yet. We'll, we'll go back later. You better take good care of them, Manly. I'm trusting you. Wow. <sighs> oh, they like you so much already. The tiny straw bunny curled up nicely with my hand, making themselves comfortable. They were so tiny, I was afraid of accidentally crushing or eating them. Hey Manly, this is a little unrelated, but... Hypothetically, if you could wish for and money, wish for anything, what would you wish for? I froze for a moment. My wish. My greatest desire. I, it's something I can only accomplish on my own. I want an asset of you. And what's the point of being out here? Her delighted expression fell. The disappointment in her eyes was immeasurable. I'm sorry. I should really get going. Here, I really appreciate it. But you should probably keep little buddy here. Ben. The straw bunny clung to my thumb. Oh, you don't want to be near me, straw bunny. You're not going to like when that happens in the later route. But I managed to pry them off and set them down on the table. A sad smile rose on my face. I was going to miss both of them, but I knew I shouldn't stay. I'll be honest. Going back to the bad... This has been pretty peaceful so far. Going back to the bad route is going to be more painful now that I'm playing it this way. But we may hit a bad route, naturally. 
Sometimes, like, these choices are, like, inverse. Wait, it's dangerous out in the woods at this time. Why not stay for the night? I have an extra... I cut her off before she could finish speaking. No, really. I need to go. I have something I came out here to do. I'm awfully sorry. And I'm still not quite sure if you're gonna kill me. Oh, please don't go, I... Thank you again for everything, Strawberry. Goodbye. I got out of my seat and made my way to the exit. When suddenly I felt something hard hit me right in the back of the head. Uh-oh! 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 Knocking me out instantly. Uh-oh! Uh, my head! Why is it always a pain in my head? Waking myself up, I noticed I wasn't in the bakery anymore. I was looking right at a bed, in a room covered with strawberry-themed furniture and wallpaper. Despite not being inside the bakery, this room smelled greatly of freshly baked bread and strawberries. This had to be Strawberry's room, no doubt, in my mind. Even more alarming, however, was that large vines were wrapped tightly around- Uh-oh! Uh-oh! And brought my entire body. Vines with strawberries growing off of them. What the hell was going on here? What? Why would Strawberry do this to me? I was trying to survive! I thought I was nice to you, I'd live! God damn it. That's what I get for trusting a stranger. I should have been cynical. Was she going to kill me? Or would she use me for some weird magic stuff I didn't understand? All I knew was I had to escape. I had to get out of here. Before she came back up to get me. I struggled against the vines. Only barely managed to pry one of my hands out of its fruit-scented grass. Mm. That's when I heard a familiar sound come from the stairs. Ben. 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 Little buddy! I whispered as they walked closer to where I was tied up. Oh! If I ate you, that means you wouldn't be here to save me. So I did make the right choice. Any chance you could help me out of this? The tiny strawberry bunny looked around them from side to side, observing the room. See, Manly knows. Manly's got this. I watched them as they hopped up into the nightstand and used their tiny hands to push over a basket. Then, The crash of the basket wasn't loud, thankfully. Two items caught my attention that were within my reach. Within reach of my free hand. I mean, same thing, really. I only had time to use one. I had to think fast. Strawberry's diary. Gardening shears. Okay. So, this is the one I was a little scared to do because it's a bun. But, we're gonna have to do it now. Eat it. When an odd choice for a snack, making a strawberry look like a bunny was certainly creative. I'll give her that. The texture seemed much harder than a regular strawberry, though. Perhaps it would be easier to eat in small pieces. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no! No! Oh god. Tearing apart the straw bunny, I know a strawberry's smile fall. I could have sworn I heard some sort of high-pitched squeak. Perhaps it was just my imagination. I was quite hungry after all. Oh my god. Oh my god. The witch had an expression that I now registered as complete discomfort and disgust after putting a small piece of the straw bunny in my mouth. What? What are you? The taste, it was exquisite. Sweeter than absolutely anything I've ever had before. Wow, strawberry, this is amazing. I spoke my praise, I bite with my mouth slightly full. Strawberry wasn't looking too well. I'll, I'll be right back. Oh my god, what have we done? Oh my, oh no. She quickly rushed off to the kitchen. I felt like I did something to cause her discomfort. I would think so. I should follow after her just in case. Imagine if you met the apple people, right? You meet like, that person's like a personification of an apple. And you started like just chugging down apples in front of them. Well, this thing was a little bit more detailed inside than in like, you know, a standard apple would be. No, no, where is it? I saw Strawberry frantically opening every drawer. Oh, wait, wait a minute, what are you doing? The cupboard inside the kitchen, looking for something desperately. She even opened the massively sized oven, looking inside of it. Ah, tell me, why would it be in the oven? I approached her closer as she continued her search. Strawberry, what's wrong? Stay back, please. Tears were streaming down her face. She looked as if she had witnessed a murder. I... I'm not sure what I did, but I'm sorry. How... How could you do that to a living, breathing creature? I... I trusted you. I'm not sure I understand what you mean. 
Strawberries are meant to be eaten. You say that to the strawberry being? The witch's expression suddenly became more blank. No. More shocked feels most appropriate here. It was just a snack, right? Honestly, they were delicious. You could you consider selling those in your bakery. I never had anything more delectable in my life. I was cut off guard mid-sentence when Strawberry grabbed the sides of my arms. She was strong. Much, much stronger than she looked. Her grip was hurting me. Strawberry? Before I knew it, she began pushing me, backing me into a corner. With one giant push, she threw me into... Oh no! Her oven! The fire scorched my skin immediately, putting my body into complete shock. I could smell my flesh burning off of me. Soon it would be nothing but a burnt corpse. I struggled to get out. Get out of the oven. Get out of the fire. Everything was so hot. So unbearably hot. I screamed in excruciating pain as the fire consumed me more and more. Slowly. Why are you smiling? Think this is funny? Strawberry closed the oven. Ending one out of five. Wicked Witch. Um, guarding a shear seems like a, like an obvious offensive item, but if she's got like magic, that might be the bad one. Because her weakness is probably her diary. We could find something out in that one. Cause she just could she could just poison ivy. Like she sees a shear, is like, oh, you think that's gonna work? Poison ivy powers, and it's like, oh damn, who would ever expect you have poison ivy powers and could just stop me from stabbing you? Gardening shears. The gardening shears were the obvious choice for my escape. I grabbed them without hesitation and started cutting each vine until I could worm my way out. Bun, 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 bun! Gardening shears are bad, bun! Shh, come on, little buddy. Without thinking, I scooped the strawberry under my arms and carefully snuck down the spiral staircase. With each step, I feared more for what could happen if I got caught. I still didn't know why strawberry had knocked me out. She could be planning anything. I sure as hell wasn't going to stick around to see what she had planned. Creeping down into the main bakery, a million thoughts of panic rushed through my mind. In the distance, I could hear the soft humming of my captor. It appeared to be coming from the kitchen. I tiptoed through the bakery to the door, my heartbeat increasing in speed. I froze in place upon opening the door, forgetting that these types of stores have bells attached to their doors. The humming in the distance stopped in an instance. I didn't have time to be careful anymore. I bolted through the door and into the woods. Oh, we just escaped. Running through the fields of strawberries, I briefly glanced behind me for a moment. Wait! The sight I saw was certainly less than pleasant. Those eyes of hers. They looked unlike anything I've ever seen. She looked like a true monster. Manly! You can't hide, Manly! She chased after me as I ran for the trees. I tried to lose her within the winding paths of the forest. I clung into strawberry for dear life. The sweat that emanated from my palms didn't help, however. Ben! Ben! Strawberry cried out, using grip on my hand themselves. The poor creature managed to slip out of my hands, went far, far behind me into the bush. I stopped for a moment to try and re rec recollect them, but fear coursed my veins upon hearing footsteps getting closer and closer. How was she so insanely fast? It was terrifying. I was being chased by someone with abilities I didn't even understand. I'm so sorry, little buddy. Damn, that actually made me really sad. I whispered before running like my life depended on it. My life did depend on it. My legs were still sore from earlier, but I had to push through. I couldn't let her catch me. Not like this. At one point I had ran so much I was certain I had lost her. I looked behind me once more to be sure. I felt relieved for a moment, but that relief was short-lived as I felt my feet stumble over a rock. Immediately knocking me unconscious, I slammed my head against the dirt path. Hello? Hello, are you alright there? Ending 4 out of 5, the loop. I wonder if the wrong CG played here. Cause it, you know, like, the CG's probably supposed to be, it's probably like a bug, the CG's probably supposed to be the CG you see at the start of the game when you first meet her. So it's implying like, we, we escape, we hit our head, and then we wake up again. And then, like, you know, it keeps happening. I grabbed the diary without thinking. Something in my gut told me that there would be some sort of information. Some sort of answer. Something at all that would help me make sense of all of this. 
with my single hand, I began flipping through the pages. Strawberry's Diary. Day 1. I finally did it. I proved myself enough of my magic to be sent on a special mission. Wait, what? They told me that I'm finally ready to fulfill my purpose. I'm finally ready to make a good impact on the world. I'm bringing this diary with me to fill out all my fun adventures. Apparently I'm being sent to some sort of pocket dimension. Pocket dimension? They said it'll be just me for a while. But I know how to garden and bake. So at least food won't be an issue. I asked them what the purpose of the pocket dimension was. They said that people with great desires often find themselves lost in forests like these. They get sent here. My job is to help them fulfill their true desires. Just write me a check. I'm not sure how good I'll be at fulfilling desires. I'm just a strawberry witch after all. But I won't let anyone down. I want to fulfill my purpose no matter what. I'll bring a few books. Oh, maybe, maybe she might not be bad. It could be like a... This is my guess. She trapped us because she has to fulfill her job. And if we just leave, then she's not doing her job. So it was just like a little bit forceful. Hopefully. I don't want to get baked. I'll bring a few books about Wishgrain to study up on. I could really use any help I can get. I'm sure I'll find some way to help others, right? Day 5. I absolutely love my little bakery. So far no one has come yet. But I search every edge of this pocket world just in case pretty often. I'll admit... I'm getting a little anxious out here all by myself. I really hope that these people desire sweet treats. <laughs> Here's the other thing that probably happened. She, we don't know how long she's been out here alone. We might be the first customer. Per se. They never did tell me what's supposed to happen after I helped the people. I guess I'll just wander back into the forest and find their way out? I don't know. I'm sure I'll update this more if I find an answer. Day 16. Someone finally came. No, no. Yeah, another person came. A girl. A kind of pretty girl. She and I talked in my bakery for a while, and I gave her absolutely every treat her heart desired. It was so lovely talking to another person after such a long time. I'm really going to miss her. She went back into the woods just now. I offered to let her stay longer, but she said she couldn't. She looked exasperated and despondent. There was a complicated look in her eyes I didn't quite understand. I hope I helped her. I did everything correctly, right? Day 17. Oh my god. Oh god. The girl, she... Why? I found her by the lake, shit. Oh god. She drowned. She's not alive anymore. Here one moment turned absolutely nothing but an empty shell the next. Oh, they did say that you die when you go to the forest. Wh what did I do? They didn't prepare me for this? Day 20. I'm starting to feel a little bit better after all of this. I'm sure it was all an accident, right? I did everything I could. I just need to look forward. Tomorrow's another day, and I'm going to help many people. I still hear the girl's voice sometimes. I only talked to her once, but I miss her dearly. What happens if I can't help anyone? It's my job. My true purpose. I'm supposed to help these people fulfill their desires. I just have to keep trying. Day 42. Why? Why does this keep happening? I'm really starting to freak out here. Three new people have come and gone. None of them stayed for long. All of them... I found all of them. All their bodies decaying in different places. In different ways. I mean, the woods are pretty dangerous. It doesn't even have to be cursed woods. It just could be just normal woods. There's no one else out there. This wasn't just any mistake. This was on purpose. I'm gonna throw up. Day 89. I haven't been able to help anyone. Not a single person. It all ends the same way. They're what I do or what I give them. The people always leave. They always... I've worked on practice, trying to practice magic outside of my expertise. I haven't had luck yet, but I'm getting desperate. Something, anything to make them stay. Anything to keep them alive and out of the forest. Day 136. Is it... Is it all my fault? I keep trying harder and harder to make staying more appealing to them. To make being alive more attractive. Even just for one more day. Nothing works. Am I... Destined to be a failure of a witch? I keep sitting up more and more and wish granting. However, it's so difficult to get a clear grasp on. 
This is nothing like growing strawberries. It's so lonely out here in the forest. I've started making small creatures just to have someone to talk to. I won't find dead the following day. I tried just making bunnies, but... My magic, it's still... I just have to keep trying. Day... question mark. I'm so tired. I've lost track of all the days. It's been so long since I last even rode in here. For a while, I couldn't bear to even leave my bakery. I was terrified of something horrible happening, scared of seeing something terrible. I feel terrified every day of waking up, and seeing someone new, someone I cared about gone from this world. It is true that every person steps foot into this bakery I care about. I keep thinking that maybe if I just try harder, if I'm nicer, that I give them anything they want, possibly things will be different. Maybe they'll stay, but maybe I'm just being selfish here. Do I want them to stay because I want them to stay alive? Or do I want them to stay because I'm lonely desperation? I haven't been able to save a single person. I don't even think I'm that good of a person anymore myself. If I was a good person, things would be different. I would be able to prevent this all. But I can't. I can't do anything right. It all feels so out of my control. My mental state is worsening by the day. I don't know how much longer I can take this. I'm getting desperate. The page after that was ripped out. I closed the book. I'd read enough. So that's why I'm in this predicament. Some leave overcame me as I realized she wasn't out for blood. Or jam. It seemed like the exact opposite. She was trying to prevent another death. Even if her methods of doing so were flawed. My deepest desire. My reason for coming here. She was right. Despite what I may have said in the past, I, I got lost in this forest on purpose. I've always clung onto the superstitions subconsciously. They always brought me back to childhood. Back to a time when things were easier. Now everything was a mess. Everything felt so hopeless. So out of my control. Strawberry words in her diary. They resonated with me deeply. I can't put her through this again. No matter what I feel about my worthless life. She doesn't deserve to see another corpse. I gently put the book down the second I heard humming come from up the spiral staircase. Strawberry. Ben, 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 Ben. Oh, you're awake. Straw Bunny, you're here too. I am... Golly, I'm awfully sorry about all this. I just kind of panicked and um... Well, I didn't want you to get hurt out there, so I uh... I, I didn't really think this through. That's fine, but maybe choose me it's a little bit less uh... Strapped to the baddie, because that... There's some connotations there. Strawberry, it's okay. You think you can undo these vines? Well, I would really love to do that for you, Manly, but... I can't risk you leaving out into the forest. Please understand, it's not safe out there. I have no intentions of going to the forest. Strawberry looked a bit taken aback by my response. Huh? But I thought you... Forgive me, but... I read your diary while you were gone. Huh? I... You've been truly kind to me, Strawberry. You've done nothing but show your kindness to others. But the world has only shut you out. I know how that feels. Strawberry looked down at the floor as I spoke. You've forgotten how to be kind to yourself, though. Other people's lives aren't your responsibility. And I hate those assholes who put you here knowing this would happen to you. Why are you saying this to me? I should be saying this to you. You came into this forest for a reason. But you've done nothing but to be kind to me and Straw Bunny. You're even trying to comfort me now, and when I... I did horrible things to you. Nothing like the horrible things I'm going to do to you in these other routes. She started to tear up. You're so much more kind than you'll ever know. You don't deserve this. You don't deserve any of this. I may not know much about you, but whatever happened in your life to bring you to this place, I'm so... so sorry I... I'm sorry for making you stay. Strawberry lifted her hand, and as she did, the vines retracted and let me loose from their grip. I stood up and pulled Strawberry into a tight hog. Who knows the last time either of us had one, but we both needed one. I felt her shakily hug me back, crying onto my shoulder. I'm not going anywhere, I think. I, I think I'd like to stay here for a while, if that's okay. No, I shouldn't force you to. You're not forcing me to. I want to. It's understandable, though, if you'd rather not not. No! I mean, um, no, I really would love to have you stay for as long as you desire. That is, um, what you desire. 
I smiled and pulled away from the hug. Strawberry slowly calming down and wiping the tears from her face. What I desire. I think what I desire now is a company of someone like Strawberry. Someone who understands. Maybe bit by bit, things will get better for the both of us. At least for now, we wouldn't have to be alone. Huh, Manly. You couldn't eat all of our decorations. I said I was going to eat this house. It's been quite a while since I moved in with Strawberry and the Straw Bunnies. Is this kind of like marriage? I can't exactly remember how long, though. So doing so, I've noticed her mood greatly improving. She taught me how to bake in garden. And for me, I taught her about folklore and superstitions of different cultures. I've even watched her magic blossom improve. She can grant small wishes with ease now. We've seen people come and go throughout the bakery. Some of them didn't have the happiest of endings. But we keep trying. Strawberry at least doesn't have to carry the burden alone. And she's doing a better job of not taking responsibility for it either. She has hoped that one day, things will be different. I'll admit, her optimism has really rubbed off on me. Hello, Earth to Manly. You're dozing off again. <laughs> sorry, sorry, well... Hey, if that worried about me eating too many strawberries, then you should stop growing such tasty ones. She laughed her sweet and melodical laugh. <laughs> I'm... I'm glad you like them. Just make sure we have enough to decorate all these cakes, okay? Alright, I suppose so. Life wasn't going to get any easier. I still think about why I originally came here from time to time. But slowly, I think things will be okay. Things will be okay for the both of us. Till I reload this save. Good end. Well, time to ruin things. Alright, let's go all the way to the back. Let's, like, just be, like, mean. I don't know. I don't know where I'm from. We don't really have witches. How can I trust you? Probably looked a bit dejected from my answer. I almost felt bad, but it's good to be cautious regardless of how sweet as someone seems. There was a part of it that was very alluring. Internally, my inner child had hoped she was the witch from the legend. However, I couldn't forget the ever superstition of all those who become lost in the forest are destined to die. Could this all be some elaborate trick, I wonder? Oh, I promise, I'm not like all of the horrible fairy tales. I'm a strawberry witch. My magical specialty is with anything strawberry-related. Although, I also use my magical abilities to help my plants and make lovely sweet treats that inspire the world. Er, just inspire parts of the forest. I'm really not dangerous honest. I'm only trying to help, Manly. I suppose she does have a point. It really doesn't seem like a threat, if only a bit on. I'll have to admit, part of me was a tad disappointed that she wasn't the Witch of Legends. I suppose that's what I get for still believing in childish things like that, huh? It's not really like I had anything to do bear anyways. I came to this forest for a reason, but a break from my journey wouldn't hurt. Alright, thank you, I'll come with you. Her eyes lit up at a response. It's almost as if she hadn't had a willing customer in a long time. Oh, thank you, thank you, I promise you won't regret this. Here, it's right this way. Let's say it's very strange. That was just plain freaky. It seemed deceptively cutesy and something that's about this whole situation just wasn't sitting right in my stomach. I mean, this was all a bad dream. It explained the fantastical setting. You know, the pain in my legs and head solidified the fact that this wasn't a dream. Dude, what was really going on here? It's very... strange. I said out loud. Mostly in response to the situation. This made Strawberry frown. Obviously, she was hoping for a more pleased answer. I don't feel bad. Even if she did work hard on all this, the Strawberry Witch gimmick was starting to freak me out. Doubts in my head began surfacing with the trustworthiness of this girl. See, we were the real villain all along. Um, uh, that's okay. Everyone has different tastes, I suppose. She tried to answer politely. But I could tell from her shaky voice my words hurt her. Here, regardless, you should rest inside. The witch guided me inside. The overpowering smell of sugar filled my nostrils with every step closer. And we're gonna skip ahead again. Now for the drink answer, let's say I don't want anything, thanks. I don't think I want anything, thanks. I spoke with a cold expression that caused Strong my smile to fall. Huh? But wasn't that the reason we came here in the first place? To get you something to drink? 
A mysterious self-proclaimed witch invites me into her house and offers me a drink, hoping for nothing in return. She may appear nice, but this was just too suspicious. What if she was putting something in a drink? Whatever demise might befall me here was definitely not the way I want to go out. My silence was telling for her. I could see her tense up slightly more of each passing second. God, it feels cruel to do this to you. Oh, it's okay, Manly. You must not be thirsty. Why not take a seat and rest for a while? I just need to check on something real quick. She said this before quickly scurrying into a door in the corner room, which I can only assume led into the kitchen. So I accidentally skipped her first dialogue here. I can't really go, quite go back. I, mean, I can show it right here. Are you sure you don't want anything manly? Anything at all? And then she says here, the potential of her poisoning drug and doing worse than drink greatly outweighed my first. Very safe than sorry. Yes, I'm sure. Uh, okay. Just let me know if you change your mind, all right? I'm always here if you need anything. And I truly do mean anything at all. I want to drink money. She's smiling at me. Her voice sounded genuine and concerned. It was mainly strange to feel someone so worried about me, and I must skip ahead again. Our conversation slowly melted into silence. I should probably think of something to say. Can you tell me more about yourself? Can you tell me more about yourself? I've been curious to learn more about the witch. I feel like I've only gotten short tidbits or vague information thus far. Huh? Me? Honestly, I'm a bit more curious to learn about you. Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass here. There really isn't much to me, honestly. Oh, that's not true, sugar. I can tell you have a really sweet soul. Thank you. I see the glint in your eyes. There's a spark in there unlike any of I've seen. Thank you. Despite the fact I was sure she was just saying it to be nice, I couldn't help but smile softly as the girl spoke. You're too kind. Truly. She had just met me, but she was so nice to me I didn't understand why. Enough about me, let's go back to you. Oh, right. Let's see. My hobbies are pretty obvious. I love baking and gardening with all my heart. Especially baking anything that has to do with strawberries. Haha. <laughs> strawberries are your favorite fruit, I'm guessing. I think she is Lily made of strawberry. What? No, it's oranges. Just kidding. Haha. <laughs> you sure about that? I let out a small chuckle at her humor. It was cute. She was cute. What else? Although I'm a strawberry witch, I'm still practicing new kinds of magic every day. Like recently, I've been really interested in the magic of granting wishes. Okay, we saw this before, I'm gonna skip ahead. Wait, I'll have the choice to eat it? I, I guess if you're just that cruel, you literally can only eat it. What an odd choice for a snack. We've already seen this, I don't need to see it again. All right, let's say it looks amazing here. Perfection of magic. The string is more perfection in general. The details were exquisite. It can be seen with every aspect of the house that love and care was put into it. Wow, it looks amazing. Did you make all this? The delightful expression appeared on Strawberry's face. Oh, well, partly. The building was already there. I really just used my magic to decorate and sweet things. Still decorating all this. It's really impressive. You should be proud of yourself. After saying those words, I noticed the witch swaying from side to side in a dreamy-like manner. She was giggling to herself. I leaned down to observe the bushes closer as she was in her bubbly state. What healthy strawberries. I was no gardener, but every strawberry here seemed ripe and well taken care of. Not even a single bug bite could be seen on them, which was odd considering it was a forest. Come to think of it, I haven't seen any animals around here either. Surely a place like this would attract them, wouldn't it? I stood up once more and snapped out my thoughts once I heard Strawberry's giggle subside. <laughs> I'm so glad you like it. I'm sure you'll love the inside as well. I felt a sudden tug on my arm from the little lady and quickly realized she was dragging me inside the bakery. She must really be excited about all this, huh? Let's do strawberry lemonade this time. Um, can I have some strawberry lemonade? Honestly, strawberry lemonade sound not only sweet but refreshing. I could really use that after such a long walk through the forest. Yes, of course. Go make yourself comfy, Manly. I'll be right back. With that, Strawberry pranced into the kitchen, humming a soft tune as she left. I took a moment to observe the room a bit closer before sitting down. My gaze landed on the spiral staircase in the corner of the room. Vines of strawberries wrapped themselves gently around the hand railing, ripe and fresh as all the strawberries around. Okay, so we'll skip ahead. Here you go, you must be thirsty. She said, setting down my drink of choice in front of me. I took a sip almost immediately. The cool, refreshing taste of the strawberry lemonade immediately regenerated some lost energy I had. Thank you. This was awfully kind of you. 
Aw, uh, don't mention it. I live to serve. Say, Manly, I may not be very skilled yet, but I can grant small wishes. Your deepest desires within reason could come true. I guess what I'm trying to say is... What is it your heart most desires? I stood up from my seat almost immediately. This is a route... Um, so if you're really mean to her, you're forced to eat the bunny. But if you're really, really mean to her, I think this is where the route branching happens. I sincerely hope you're not still trying to win me over. I've seen past your charade here. Huh? I don't understand. Please, your smile is so fake you can see from a mile away. I don't know what you're trying to do here, but whatever it is, it's not working on me. No, there must have been some sort of misunderstanding. This was ridiculous. I don't know why I even bother wasting my time here. Manly, please, I don't mean any harm. I even asked you to grant you a wish. I, I don't understand. Why would I ever trust one? It's useless. Useless is you to grant my wish. You seem to be a pathetic excuse for a witch. And you're the first one I've ever seen. It's actually harder to get into this route than it is for any of the good endings. Well, there's only one good ending, but you know what I mean. Hell, I wouldn't be surprised if you were lying about being a witch to get something out of someone. You look like the type of person who only uses others for her own benefit. Why do you even try? I'm sad at this point, Strawberry. I hate liars and deceivers. Because our first run for the game, we actually did use a mix of bad and good decisions. Strawberry stood there shocked. No words on the witch to defend herself, hmm? That's what I thought. You're nothing but a liar. Manly. Excuse me for a moment, I... I need to check on something. She ran off quickly to the kitchen once more. Running from your problems. She should just own up to it. This was so frustrating. Alright, uh... Let's wait. She wasn't worth going after. I needed the peace and quiet for a while anyways. Slowly I sat back down in the strawberry-themed chair. A moment turned out to be quite a long time. Approximately 20 minutes have come and gone. And still no sign of strawberry. Exhausted. I didn't realize how exhausted I truly was until this moment. Who knew that a chair that would normally be mildly uncomfortable could be so inviting? I suppose resting my eyes until she comes back wouldn't hurt anyone. The slightest loud noise and I'll bolt out of here. I need to still be on guard, but I need the rest. Desperately. A few squeaks slowly woke me up from my sleep. I opened my eyes tr to a truly peculiar sight. Okay. What the? Was I dreaming? A few very small creatures were nudging forward a delectable looking cake closer to me. They were like small bunnies, but also strawberries. How odd. I ripped you open in a few routes. Maybe that girl wasn't lying about being a strawberry witch at least. I tried to reach out to the creatures, but they timidly took a few steps back when seeing me move even slightly. I retracted my hand and drew my attention to the cake in the center. Top of delicious strawberries and excellent frosting, it was apparent this was one of the strawberry cakes. Perhaps these creatures took pity on me for having to wait so long for the witch. I don't want their pity, however. The growling sounds my stomach made were catching my attention. Oh wait, I'm a little worried. I mean, I'm pretty worried. A little more than a little. I must have been asleep for longer than I thought. I was already hungry. Fine. I decided to take a slice of the cake the little strawberry bunnies had prepared for me. With no hesitation, I took a bite. Chewing the dessert in my mouth, I noticed something fell off. The texture. The consistency. This didn't taste like cake at all. What the hell was this? Observing the inside of the cake should have been the first thing I did. God, how could I be so careless? Looking closer at what I was eating shook me to my core. This looked like grinded up meat with frosting on top of it. I had to hold back the violent urge to vomit all over the table. All over the small strawberry creatures, too. I had my fair share of steak, pork, and whatnot. However, this... This tasted like nothing like any of those things. It immediately freaked out. I spit out what was left of that cake into my plate. The strawberry bunnies looked up at me all at once. I had to get out of here right now. I bolted for the door before never thought could cross my mind. What's this strawberry's doing? Did my words really bring her to feed me? Whatever hell that was. The taste still lingered in my tongue. Oh, how badly one takes tan paper to numb it down to nothingness. I much preferred that to that horrible, horrible taste. I ran throughout the forest once more, just trying to get as far away from that bakery as possible. Thinking about what that could have been made me feel sick. 
hunched over. I clutched my stomach desperately. Before I knew it, I was throwing up all over the dirt floor. God damn it, I felt so weak. Every inch of my insides felt like they were imploding. Well, at least I made it out there before she could do something horrible to me. I think it was finally time for me to do what I meant to do in this forest in the first place. Ending 3 out of 5. What a glorious cake. Altered Town Cannibal Cake. So, is it because it was made out of the buns? Because the buns look like they're made out of meat. You know, we saw from the one ending. Or did she make herself into a cake and had the buns cook her? Because I don't see her around. Let's try following her. As if I'll let her get away that easily, who knows what she could be plotting. I got up from my seat quietly and followed her into the kitchen, making sure not to draw attention to myself. The witch was running frantically from one drawer to another, investigating each cupboard with a certain sense of desperation. I knelt down behind the counter to avoid getting caught. What was she looking for? No, no, God, where is it? Where is it? Her voice rang throughout the room, shaken and broken. She sounded like she was crying. Her back was turned to me as though she, as she dug through one of the drawers. Suddenly, Strawberry gasped. I took this moment to sneak closer to her while she turned away from me. She was holding some sort of paper that was ripped out of a notebook. Reading only the first few sentences, I could tell what kind of note this was. From what I could see, it began with, My dear Straw Bunnies, I'm so sincerely sorry for you to find me in such a way. Never wanted to come to this, but I just can't handle any more of this torture. Please forgive me. When I die, I want my body to be useful to you all. Please consume my corpse in whatever way you would find most delicious. Perhaps a sweet cake. No! I stopped reading after that part. What the hell is wrong with this woman? Have I really pushed her that far that she resort to this? No, clearly she was already unstable if she had that note pre prepared. She turned around much quicker than- Well, I mean, we got the answer to that one ending. Then I thought she would. It caused us both off guard seeing each other. <sighs> what are you doing here? Shaking a bit, Strawberry held her note behind her back. It was a little too late to hide that. What are you doing? I didn't answer her previous question. Frankly, I was a little shocked at such a turn of events. No, my straw bunny seeming like this is bad enough. She was mumbling to herself now. Never said answers to each other's questions. Why are you still here? I know why you're really here. I know why everyone comes to this forest. Just leave already. Get over with somewhere I can't see. I'm so tired of this. Her mumbles turned into loud and coherent sobs. It was hard figuring out what exactly she meant. Taking a step back, I tried to process what she was saying. The real reason I came into this forest. I tried to help you. I tried to help everyone. But I can't do any more. Nothing I ever do ever works. Nobody ever stays. More tears fell down from her face as she backed herself against the drawers. Every time she tried to wipe a tear away, I never would replace it seconds later. I would never seen someone shake this much. Until suddenly, the tears stopped. I was frozen in place. She looked off to the side with a dead expression. But hey, you said it yourself, Manly. I'm a pathetic excuse for a witch. <laughs> Strawberry laughed, an unsettling smile creeping up on her face. I can at least fulfill my purpose one more time. I know what your heart truly desires, Manly. Money? I didn't understand what she was saying until I realized that she grabbed a knife on top of the drawers. Oh, wait a minute. My heartbeat was skyrocketing. I quickly turned to run out of the kitchen. You're gonna be delicious. Strawberry called out, quickly punching the knife into my back before I could make my escape. I could feel the blood pulling out of me as I screamed in pain. What hurt even more was the second and third stab she made immediately afterwards. I fell to the floor, feeling myself giving into all the pain. I slowly lost consciousness. Ah, what a glorious cake. Shame more people won't be able to enjoy it. Hmm. Don't worry, Manly. I'll join you soon. <laughs> Eating two out of five. What a glorious cake. So, that's it for Berry Witched. So there's, there's some funny feelings about this, uh, you know, visual novel. I really like the good ending. I mean, I'm fine with the bad endings too, but like, I really like that there was a normal peaceful ending. Like, it wasn't, like, bittersweet or anything. It was just... She was actually a nice person. You're right? 
she actually was, like, looking out for you. Like, there wasn't, like, a really dark twist or anything. Well, aside from the context of where she was and what her mission was. And if you responded to her positively, you got a nice ending, right? That's, that's actually pretty rare. Usually these games are pretty cynical about that. And then the... The, um... The bad endings are just schlock. They don't, they don't actually, like, make, like, full sense. Not in the sense, like, they, they don't make complete sense. Like, oh, they, they, these things shouldn't be able to happen, blah, blah, blah. This is out of context or character. It's just more of... They're just, they're just so over the top, like, dark. That it's such, like, a huge contrast tone to, like, the main route. I will say this one actually makes a little more sense. Because of that, to actually go for the better ending first. Or at least kind of move towards that route. Because without doing that, if you just hit, like, the schlock ending first, because it is actually a little bit harder, like I said, to hit the bad endings, the really, really bad endings anyway, uh, on your first run, because you have to, like, there's more specific options you have to choose. Then you would lose context for why those endings are sadder. Without it, you just kind of, like, you're just mean, right? You're just mean, and it's just, like, a bad ending. But getting those after getting the good ending is, like, a real gut punch, because you know her intentions are good. So now you're just pulling, like, a, an evil time wizard, uh, an evil time wizard suffering simulator. That's why you can't trust time wizards. They just like seeing every option. Even the bad ones. But yeah, I liked it. Uh, this was a very specific game jam. Although it's kind of funny saying it's a strawberry jam themed game jam, but that's literally what it was. Uh, and they, they thought of a way to incorporate that. And good on them. Anyway, so thank you all for watching me play Berry Witched. I'll see you guys later, and take it easy.